how things are going on. Yeah, I'm still don't want to run away from university. Still want to study, yeah? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, two comments I have for you, uh, mostly based on uh, requests I got recently. So first comment about textbook. Um, unfortunately, this printed textbook you cannot take with you home. Uh, so you, if you really want to work with the textbook, uh, you have to do it in the uh, library. So that is the um, information about the textbook. So unfortunately, you cannot add it to your uh, package. So you, so you can pick it up and take with you um, home. Uh, another uh, thing is uh, there were some questions about. this try me quiz in Moon. So some of you guys still do not have this try me quiz in your Moodle when you log in into your Moodle account, go to this uh, physics 161, uh, just below the uh, announcements, there should be try me uh, like active link where you can go. Uh, so this is a quiz, as I mentioned earlier, uh, which will allow you to practice uh, solving problems in Moodle, so to avoid some potential uh, issues in the future. So uh, that's if that is the case in in uh, your Google uh, sorry Moodle account, please contact IT department and uh, let them know about this. Uh, so these issues mentioned that you are um, taking this class Physics One Sixty One and uh, you are not properly enrolled into this uh, Moodle system uh, because you will need it to, to practice. It's not so critical to have it right now, but um, in the near future, definitely would like to practice with, with this uh, try me uh, account. Uh, <clears throat> so mm, if you have any questions regarding uh, organizational work of our course, uh, you're welcome. Uh, if if not, then we can proceed further and start with our topics. So um, physics is the some fundamental natural science uh, which tries to understand the nature, like processes which happen in nature, uh, matter which nature consists of. Uh, so it's kind of very broad definition. Um, obviously. Here we will consider, like start with mechanics, means we will deal like classical mechanics. So we will deal with um, behavior of uh, some macro objects, which will interact with each other. And uh, our questions, which we will going to, to answer, uh, will be, what will be the position of somebody over some time? in given system of references, um, how uh, fast it's going to move, um, what is the reason for this motion, um, and uh, uh, things like that. So um, that are, is our like beginning, like first steps into uh, mechanics, and uh, uh, we will start from some element, like, like uh, uh, point objects, and then we will um, go to extended objects uh, involving not only translational, but also rotational motion uh, and things like this. Uh, however, uh, we need to introduce certain so-called dimensions um, and uh, also mention about units first, because all this is quite, quite important. So that will be the topic we will cover uh, today. And let's say if we have this table, what kind of parameters, like features of this uh, table we can highlight? So it possesses some uh, mass. mass, that is correct. Obviously it made from some material, in this case, some plastic and metal, uh, and that will, this, this object will possess some mass. So 
another feature. Okay, so lens. So all these features are kind of important, but uh, in terms of let's say what we consider in scope of mechanics. So uh, the size and shape of this of this uh, table matters. So we need to deal with uh, either height or width, or length. So in any way we call it length. So that's the dimension length, which uh, so we have the one dimension uh, mass, another dimension length, and. Uh, uh, what is important dimension defines the physical nature of the of the uh, parameter which we consider. So if we have some quantity uh, with some dimension, so we clearly know uh, to which kind of feature this uh, dimension belongs uh, and uh, what it describes. So we cannot compare quantities with different dimensions. So for instance, if we're talking about mass and uh, height of this table, we obviously cannot compare them because they possess different dimensions. They describe, like possess different physical nature. So it doesn't make sense to compare them. Another dimension, which is critical for our, our uh, work in uh, uh, the scope of mechanics is uh, time. So for instance, if we start to move at some given conditions, we move this table from point A to point B, and then there will be some uh, time interval which will take us to move this object from point A to point B. It doesn't happen instantaneously. Uh, we don't have teleportation of physical object. So uh, there will be some time uh, uh, interval. And uh, uh, this uh, another dimension which should be taken into, into account. So let us uh, highlight it uh, here. We have first mass, then we have lens, and we have pi. So capital M, L, and T, those define their um, dimensions of uh, which are relevant for our consideration in the scope of mechanics. <clears throat> so, okay, we have dimensions. We know the physical nature of, of the parameter. However, we also need to quantify. So we need to provide some uh, reproducible and uh, accurate way to quantify this because uh, let's say if we compare these two tables like table one and table two uh, obviously the table two is larger however that is qualitative approach we only qualitatively can uh, make a statement that table two is larger we cannot um, without introducing uh, certain units uh, of measurement. We cannot um, make any quantitative statements. So what kind of units for uh, measurement lens do you know? Meters. So yeah, we started from meters. So in the international system of units, uh, meters is the unit for, for lens. That's correct. But also other uh, units which you mentioned, they also are true. Either some derivative of meters, we have centimeters, kilometers, um, but also there are different units like inches, like miles, uh, and they are quite widely used in, in the world. Uh, so uh, they are different. It could be quite confusing, but uh, if correctly keep all this relationship between units into uh, mind, uh, we will eventually have the same results. It's just the thing that different units are accepted in different um, countries and, and communities. For instance, how it started. So uh, obviously at some point people wanted to have some uh, standard unit for lens. And then how to do it? Imagine some Asian kingdom, you want to introduce some unit of lens, 
and want to still have your head on your shoulder, so it's, king is happy, you probably introduce some lens of king's foot as a etalon, and that will be the unit of measure. So that's an option, but uh, that's not very reliable because kings are changing and their foot lengths also may deteriorate over time. So uh, then next step was to introduce some uh, physical objects, let's say some reliable, I don't know, some stick metal stick, for instance, or and define what this uh, stick has a length of one meter, let's say. And that will be our standard. So we will calibrate all our um, uh, equipment, uh, measuring equipment, with respect to this piece of metal. And uh, that works way better, quite more stable uh, metal stick than uh, King's foot. However, uh, what if, first of all, someone steals this stick, it disappears. Second, uh, there is some linear uh, like extension or uh, comp uh, like change of linear size upon heating or cooling. So if the temperature is different, the length will be also different. So uh, means that uh, you need to keep all this uh, the same conditions, which is not so uh, trivial to realize. And uh, then you calibrate your devices with uh, some unit which is not constant, uh, means your different devices will measure with different accuracy and will provide some systematic errors to measurements. So the goal, those standards for uh, units, for instance, for meter, is actually a very long process for all uh, SI units. They are always re revisited in terms of improve the accuracy of their determination and uh, the reliability. So you don't want to rely on some physical object with in terms of length or or mass because these physical objects they can change their properties they can disappear different things can happen plus uh, if you move to another planet gravitation will be different than probably length of the object can um, also uh, be different so it's not good idea to stick to some to some physical object it makes more sense to stick to some uh, fundamental constants and fundamental features which will not change uh, never uh, uh, in, in regardless on the position of uh, where you want to double check this uh, unit so it was probably recently i think like in 2019 last time uh, lens mass and and time um, uh, units, uh, international units were reconsidered, uh, so we will not go into the specifics how they are defined, you can read about this separately, just need to understand that this is a continuous process and we always want to make it more accurate and more reliable in, in order to rely only on some um, fundamental things which do not change regardless of any conditions. So uh, another thing what is very important, we mentioned about it. Uh, so yeah, and also of course we have one more dimension, it's time. So in international uh, system of units, it's um, uh, second. So um, it's very important to be sure that the conversion between units is correct. So, and, and which units you are using because uh, different things happen be, uh, as a result of this misinterpretation of units. Either you come to like, for instance, European uh, tourists come to uh, United States and uh, pick up in grocery store some uh, packages with fruits and vegetables, then go to the cashier to check out and um, eventually have to pay more than twice they expected. Uh, and that's only because they didn't pay attention that prices were per pound, not per kilo. So that is quite a uh, relaxed situation, but 
uh, in the history happened quite different things. For instance, in 1983, Air Canada flight, uh, when they made the shift to uh, international units, um, at the beginning of this shift, they had an accident with uh, um, their flight when they had to turn around in the middle of their flight in order to uh, land as soon as possible because the, they figure out that the fuel tank was empty and that was after like investigation was done it was clearly that the reason was just this transition from uh, between systems of units and was incorrectly uh, <coughs> calculated how much of fuel should be added to the uh, fuel tank. Uh, another example, NASA lost its 125 million uh, satellite, which supposed to investigate weather like climate uh, on planet Mars, uh, also because misinterpretation of uh, these units, uh, because uh, um, the flight control unit of NASA was uh, using different units as one of their subcontractor when they designed the uh, flight control system for the uh, satellite. So uh, things happen and obviously this could be avoided if you take care about units. Uh, that's why 30% of your answers for solving problems will uh, originate from correct units. So please be uh, aware of this. <clears throat> So now let us come back again to dimensions. And uh, um, there is such thing as dimensional analysis. So it's quite useful, uh, first of all, to double check if your solution is correct. So every time when you do some, um, you solve a problem, you derive equation, so you want the, the ideal way which saves you a lot of time and let you uh, make less mistakes is to derive final equation and then just substitute the numerical numbers there. Uh, that means that you will have less steps and uh, um, the chance to get some technical errors goes down. However, you need to be sure that your derived equation is correct and dimensional analysis is very good because we mentioned that we cannot compare two um, quantities with different dimensions because they possess different physical nature. What does it mean? It means that if you have some equation and uh, there is some left side of this equation and uh, right side of the equation, uh, dimensions of left and right side, they should be the same. They cannot be different. If they are different, means you made some mistake in your derivation. So if, for instance, we write here that we have uh, m uh, in the power of a, l in the power of b, and t in the power of c, and that is uh, equal to m in the power of x, l in the power of y and t in the power of z then what is your suggestion what should be values for x y and z a b c yes so uh, that is the golden rule you need to remember in dimensional analysis left side dimension should be the same as right side dimensions and uh, another thing what is good for the dimensional analysis is when we uh, want to make some prediction in the field which is not yet established. So we are not sure exactly, we don't have enough information about the uh, system of our interest, but um, we can make some estimation what parameter will make a difference, what parameter actually uh, matters in our system. Uh, and uh, will define the uh, feature of our interest. Um, and then dimensional analysis can help us to get some relationship between parameter of our interest and parameters which we know. So it can tell us what um, will be the dominant parameter 
which has the most influence on the unknown parameter, and uh, uh, also can show us the behavior, like in, in, in terms of some uh, equation, some um, uh, dependence uh, of uh, these parameters on each other. Uh, the thing is that it will not give you the exact analytical solution, obviously. Uh, so this final, this equation is not final equation, which will accurately describe parameter of your interest. But uh, it will give you with accuracy this equation with accuracy to some constant. And that is quite helpful because you can make a rough estimation initially that can really help to um, define some direction of your research in certain project uh, and uh, uh, figure out which of many parameters involved uh, will be the most important in your case. So let us consider one example uh, and that is uh, uh, let's say we have some system um, <clears throat> uh, with some object is moving with uh, constant acceleration. So we will derive analytically these next um, uh, lectures. Uh, but now we just, with the help of dimensional analysis, we'll try to figure out what will be the, um, how this de uh, dependence will look. So let's say we have some position X. And we have object which moves with constant acceleration, uh, A. So obviously position will be proportional to, to acceleration. So we, it makes sense, just some common sense. Uh, what else? Uh, we also kind of common sense that time will also be an important parameter here because the longer it takes, uh, the larger the object can move. So it should be also in this equation. So we have two parameters, acceleration and time, which uh, at some level uh, in, like define the position X. However, uh, we don't know uh, how exactly um, these parameters influence. Uh, is it like this or uh, we have some uh, stronger dependence on time or acceleration? So here we can write some, uh, I don't know, let's say what we use here. We can write, let's say N and M, N, M. Uh, and we don't know this power, N and power M. So let us consider what is the unit for left side of the equation. So, well, not unit, but dimension. So here is X, it's position, and dimension will be left, like capital L. So what will be the uh, dimension for the right side? So here we have acceleration, A, and dimension for acceleration will be L, divided by t squared. Uh, so if we consider, just let us make it more clear. Let's say if we first consider uh, speed, so we will introduce all these parameters in the future in details. But now for dimensional analysis, let us uh, make it more clear. So let first consider speed. So speed is uh, some uh, distance which was traveled by the object divided by interval of time. So we have uh, dimension uh, in the numerator uh, L length divided by T, or it can be written as L in power one times T in power minus one. So uh, that how we get these uh, dimensions of the physical parameters. And uh, uh, acceleration is the speed of change of speed. So we need to divide uh, length by time once more. So it will be L divided by T squared. 
So eventually we can write here that acceleration, dimensions of acceleration is L in the power of uh, one, uh, and uh, here will be T in the power of minus two. Uh, in the same manner, we can also write here that it will be T in the power of zero. So it doesn't mean anything will be just unity. We also have another parameter here, which is T, and that is dimension is just time. So capital, capital T. So now we can write our dimensional analysis equation. Uh, means we need to equate left and right uh, <coughs> Uh, side uh, of this equation. So left side will be L times T in the power of zero. That's equal to L divided by T square in the power of N, because that stands for acceleration. So these are dimensions for acceleration. And times um, T in the power of M. That stands for time, T. <clears throat> so now if we um, open this, uh, it will be L in the power of N times T in the power of M minus 2n and so this is our right side and our left side will be um, l power 1 t power 0. So now we have two uh, dimensions with two different uh, in left and right side uh, power next to these dimensions. So let us first consider um, dimension length so and we can write this equation so one which is stands next to l in the left side is equal to n which stands to the uh, next to the l in the uh, right side now we write for time dimension and that is zero equal to m minus 2n so we have a system of two equations, and uh, uh, we already know that n is equal to unity. We can substitute this in second equation, and for um, m, it's equal to 2. So with this, we can uh, come back to our first suggestion, which is based just on common sense. We didn't have any uh, experimental uh, data on uh, this matter. We just assume that uh, position is proportional to acceleration and proportional to time. So now we see that n next to a is equal to unity and uh, m next to t is equal to 2. So we can write that x is equal to uh, a in the, just we don't write it, then one, we can skip it, and then times t in the power of two. So here is some mistake. We also need to get rid of equal because we, have just proportional. It, again, it doesn't give us the exact solution, um, but gives us some general dependence with accuracy of some constant. So that is our solution. And uh, uh, with this prediction, we see that time actually is more influential parameter than acceleration because time we have in second power. Uh, here uh, as opposite to uh, acceleration. Uh, so we didn't know it before. Uh, we still so far don't know exact solution because in few lectures we will uh, derive it. So it will be uh, x equal in this case, a times 
times t squared divided by 2. So that is the correct equation with 100% um, accuracy for this particular case when we have a constant acceleration of the object. Uh, however, this dimensional analysis gave us with accuracy to one half uh, the ability without any information about the system to uh, actually uh, learn about it and uh, um, define the most important parameters and behavior how this uh, parameter position x will depend uh, specifically on acceleration and time. So this could be um, helpful in different cases and uh, uh, specifically at the initial stage of your project when you don't know much about the um, system, but uh, with uh, dimensional analysis can be helpful to, to consider this. So another thing what we would like to probably uh, consider another example with dimensional analysis uh, is to estimate uh, pressure inside our sun. So let's say it's, it's not so trivial question now because it's not so easy to, to answer as in the previous uh, example. However, we can make some, some estimation. So um, what is the origin of, uh, of uh, energy produced by the sun. Reaction? No, that's not chemical reaction. That's too hot for chemical reactions. That's already on some nuclear lab. So we have thermal, yeah, thermal nuclear fusion. Uh, so we kind of put together two protons which are positively charged and uh, they repel from each other. But because of very high kinetic energy, high temperature, they can interact and form already heavier elements and uh, like uh, nuclei and uh, um, expel a lot of energy. So that is uh, the process which requires very high temperature and pressure. And obviously, in order to keep such hot substance in the center of the star, you need a lot of uh, pressure from outside to have this uh, steady state process our sun is quite stable. It doesn't change its uh, brightness uh, from day to day. So uh, this is a very stable system. So obviously this high temperature, uh, high energy in the nuclei should be compensated by very high pressure. So now let us say what <coughs> parameters of uh, this, from those, let's say, which dimensions which we consider in the scope of our discussion uh, would matter in the case of uh, such parameter as pressure inside the sun? Mass, mass. mass, exactly, and length. So length, let's say, is like radius of the, of the sun. So this obviously should be there. And we can write that pressure P will be equal to uh, mass of the sun and radius of the sun. So also we should add here gravitational constant because uh, obviously that will define the, uh, the gravitational pressure of all this material uh, which forms this mass on the center of the uh, of the star. So gravitational constant G. <clears throat> so now we don't know how exactly these parameters will influence. Uh, we could not uh, make an experiment where we create different stars with different masses uh, and uh, different radiuses and see measure pressure inside and say, okay, this is the dependence. However, dimensional analysis can help us in estimation of the uh, dependence what we, what we have. So let's put here um, x, y, and z. So it will be x, y, and z, which are unknown at this point. So uh, 
dimensions for left side and right side of the uh, equation which we have here. And again, sorry, that should be not equal. This should be proportional. So we have dimension for uh, pressure and uh, that will be mass in the power of one L in the power of minus one and T in the power of minus two. And uh, that will be our left side. And uh, our right side will be, so dimension of this constant uh, G, gravitational constant, that will be mass minus one L in third power and T minus two. And uh, when we have two more parameters, that will be mass of the sun, which actually is just mass dimension, and radius of the sun, and that is length dimension. So now we can write our dimension analysis equation. Uh, we can uh, equate units, oh, sorry, dimensions in the left, uh, side of the equation to dimensions in the right side of the equation. So, that will be m in the power of 1, let me check here, yes, times l minus 1 times t squared, that is equal to we need to keep in mind this x, y, and z because we don't know them, but we need to put them here for dimensions. That will be m minus 1 l in third power times t minus 2 in the power of x. So that is for gravitational constant g. Then times to uh, m, uh, which in the power of y, that's for mass of the sun. And we have dimension for uh, radius, it's our L in the power of Z. So now when we transform this right side of the equation, that will be M in the power of minus X plus Y uh, times L in the power of 3x plus z and times t in the power of minus 2x. Kind of open this parenthesis. So now we have, as we started from the early beginning, we have mlt in the left side and mlt in the right side. So we have the same set of um, dimensions, but they have different, um, next to them they have these uh, uh, unknown uh, parameters as like power x, y, and z, and we know that they should be equal to each other. Yes? You're welcome. Okay, and t is the power of minus two. Okay. Minus two, you mean here? Minus two. Um, the left, say, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Here we wrote t is the power of minus two. And after that? Okay, you mean here? Yeah, here. Yeah, correct. Good, thank you for following this. That's important. So we need to put it here, minus, yes. And uh, so now let us see what we, what we have. Uh, let's check around M. So we have uh, unity equal to minus X plus Y. Does it make sense? So we have uh, mass dimension. We check what power we have next to mass and uh, those they are equal to each other 
So second will be length. So for length, we have minus one equal to uh, three X plus two. So this is our L here and here. And now let us check for T uh, for time. That will be minus two equal to minus two times X. So we have this system of uh, Oh, instead of two, we have the exact. Yes, I see that somehow we lost our unknown parameter. Yeah, so this should be Z. <clears throat> so when we solve this system of um, equations, uh, three equations, we have X equal to uh, unity. Yes, then Y is equal to two and Z is equal to minus four. So now we have solution of our dimensional analysis equation. Keep this in mind. And we need to recall from what we start. We started with this suggestion for uh, pressure inside the star. So now let us substitute instead of uh, x, uh, y, z, uh, this, uh, their values which we determine. So let us do here. So we get P pressure inside the star, like let's say our sun, uh, will be proportional to G, gravitational constant in power one. So we just don't write it. Then we have mass of the star in power two. And we have uh, radius of the star in power uh, minus, well, actually it's minus four, so we just put it in the denominator. So that is our final equation, which we get from uh, dimensional analysis. And uh, uh, here we see, first of all, what parameter among those which we consider is the dominant. Obviously that will be our uh, radius. So, <clears throat> Uh, because it goes in the in the equation with the highest power, it's power of four, uh, twice larger than power next to the mass of the uh, sun. So uh, obviously, so now we can look at it and say, okay, our suggestion initial that it will be proportional pressure to um, radius is not correct. So this dimensional analysis actually also takes this into account. It's reversally proportional because um, radius stays in the denominator of this equation. So now means that if we increase mass of the um, star, obviously there is more material which will push down on the core of the star and increase pressure inside. Um, however, if we keep mass constant, if we don't change it and increase radius of the star, that actually results in a very rapid reduction of the pressure since um, the uh, density of the star will reduce. We increase um, volume uh, quite dramatically with increase of, of uh, radius, but uh, mass remains the constant. So. Um, that will result in very uh, rapid reduction of um, pressure inside the star. <clears throat> so with such approach, as you see, we didn't know anything about uh, stars and con like parameters, like processes which are going inside. So this very general understanding, but uh, even with such uh, quality of understanding what the process is, we can end up by means of the dimensional analysis uh, to an equation with, of course, with some uh, accuracy up to constant, uh, which um, with a good trend describes the, uh, such parameter as pressure inside the, the sun. So if you are interested, later you can substitute in this equation 
parameters like values for the gravitational constant mass of the uh, star and radius of the star you can of course deal with our uh, sum and uh, get like estimated value of pressure inside but keep in mind that uh, you should substitute everything in uh, SI units so just to be sure that you get the uh, right answer okay if you have any questions you are you're welcome if not I thank you for attention and wish you good evening see you on Friday